Good evening, America. Welcome to Cross Country. Today marks the 60th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. In his speech, Dr. King talked about not judging one another by the color of one's skin, but by the content of one's character. We have come so far as a nation since then. But sadly, on this same day, a mass monster committed a racially targeted attack in the city of Jacksonville, Florida, killing three people, then himself. The shooter had authored several manifestos, one to his parents, one to the media, and one to federal agents. Portions of these manifestos detailed the shooter's disgusting ideology of hate. Plainly put, this shooting was racially motivated, and he hated black people. He wanted to kill The sheriff making it very clear, this is hate, pure and simple. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is responding tonight, calling the shooter a scumbag. I was able to speak with Sheriff T.K. Waters in Jacksonville about the horrific shooting that took place. The shooting based on the manifesto that they've discovered from the scumbag that did this was racially motivated. Uh, he was targeting people based on their race. Uh, that is totally unacceptable. Uh, this guy killed himself rather than face the music and accept responsibility for his actions. And so he took the coward's way out. But we condemn what happened in the strongest possible terms. We've offered support for uh, Sheriff Waters and the city of Jacksonville. And we send our condolences to the victims and their families uh, who were the victims of, uh, of a very cowardly act. So this violence is unfortunately not the first of such tragedy. And unless we demand change now, it won't be the last. Reverend P.M. Smith serves as the Hoover Memorial Church in Baltimore, and he joins us now. Uh, Reverend, thanks so much for uh, joining the program. Uh, this is the anniversary of the March on Washington, and we have come so far as a nation. What, what do you tell the nation uh, when some, something like this happens? Number one, I was 16 at the time of that march. I remember it well. Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin, Reverend Martin Luther King was a role model for me. Number two, violence. This is making national news. I'm in Baltimore. I'm in the inner city. This is making national news as a mass shooting only because the shooter was white or if it had been a police officer. It would be mass shooting, racially motivated. I'm in Baltimore. We have a mass shooting every weekend. Mm. Friday to Sunday, there will be three or more homicides. Friday to some Sunday, there'll be 10 to 15 non-fatal shootings. So my heart goes out. My prayers for the families who lost lives, and that includes the young man, the sick young man, call him another name if you want, the sick young man who did this, but I'm telling you, in Baltimore, in Detroit, in Chicago, in Philadelphia, in St. Louis, mass shooting, three or more homicides, is normalized with us. Every week, there'll be three. Yeah, and I've been to all those cities, past, even to your beloved city, Baltimore. I want to bring in the, the great chief, James Craig. Uh, he's joining us well. Chief, um, on this day, as the investigation has just started, um, you got a new sheriff, Republican sheriff, that is there in Jacksonville, uh, Florida, made history down there. He, he made it clear that it was racially motivated there. And uh, how do you handle an investigation like this, sir? Well, you know, and Lawrence, thanks for having me on your show. I, I got to tell you, and, and I agree with your guests, it's tragic. We don't talk enough about the black on black crime occurring in urban areas. You know, I've right. worked in Los Angeles, Cincinnati, uh, Detroit for eight years as a chief of police, and mass shootings are not unusual. And certainly any mass shooting is a, tra is a tragedy, but when will it stop? And I just gotta say, man, you know, it, it's not the gun, it's the individuals. This guy clearly had some racist intent, given what the sheriff Waters talked about. But enough. It's enough. But let's talk about the other mass shootings that happen every single day in places like Chicago. 
You know, I, I got to ask, Chief, because the sheriff, during his press conference, talked about the Baker Act and that it was already implemented. He talked about the parents calling the police. He also said that the parents didn't want him to have guns. So I, I guess what do we do if we already went through the mental health process? You got the parents that were cooperative with the police. They reported that their concerns for their son. You got an evil guy that has hate in his heart. Is there any solution to this? Because I think the American people, that's what they want. They want solutions to whether it's a brother being killed on the south side of Chicago or a racist that has hate in his heart that goes in and targets people. They want it to end. Well, you know, Lawrence, there's a void. You know, we can talk at nauseum about, you know, parents or witnesses calling you know, certainly law enforcement has to do their job. I'm certainly not going to be critical of uh, my friends out in Florida. Uh, if they became aware of someone that was suffering from mental illness, that expressed a desire to engage in this level of tragic hate and evil, uh, what was done? And if law enforcement dropped the ball, and I'm not suggesting that they did, uh, but we need to look at, at that. Because uh, we oftentimes, what do we say? You see something, you hear something, you say something. Okay. But if you say something and law enforcement doesn't respond, that's a problem. And But a lot of it has to do with, and I know this having been a police chief in three different cities, you have to have relationships with the community. They have to trust you. And when they trust you, they're going to talk to you. And when they talk to you, they're going to report different levels of violence no matter how minuscule it might be to most, that's how you respond to a lot of these tragic situations. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we can't just... Now, of course, some on the left will start screaming, oh, we need gun control. Gun control is not going to work. Mm -hmm. If somebody is mentally challenged, mentally ill, or if someone is a violent felon, laws don't work. They don't follow the laws anyway. So what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. Let's stop having the same conversation and let's start dealing with the real issue at hand. Like the vice president would say, what are the root causes of this? Let's get to the root causes and let's start showing that there are consequences to your action. But we have got to service those who are suffering from mental illness. And I got to tell you, Lawrence, you know, we've talked before. Yeah. You know, I've been on so many barricaded suspects, situations, crisis calls, uh, the vast majority are individuals suffering from mental illness. The system is broken and there's no priority. Mm -hmm. We got open borders and we have individuals suffering yeah. from mental illness mm -hmm. in our urban environments because many, and what a lot will not say and I'll say it, many of our young adults mm -hmm. in urban communities are suffering from PTSD. And it's not being addressed. It's, it's such a good point, Chief. And, you know, Pastor, I got to bring you back in because we've talked a l about a lot of the elephants in the room. Another one is because of this attack and because it was racially motivated, there's going to be an attempt to divide all Americans. What do you say in this moment of time to tell the American people, don't take the bait? One hateful act shouldn't be responded responded to with more hate. Lawrence, the chief and I are on the same page. I practiced law in two states for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I defended the senseless behavior that's occurring in the urban arena where African-Americans live today. And now I am burying that criminal behavior that's killing so many of our young people, killing so many of much of our future. Here's the reality. Life has been devalued. Mm -hmm. Life has been reduced to a choice, whether it's a mother aborting a child or whether it's a brother pulling the trigger on another brother. Life has little or no value. Our values have deteriorated over time. From 1963, 1968 to now, deterioration of the values in our African-American community Life means nothing. Death is in the power of the man with the trigger. What we have to focus in on, if we go into the root cause, is 
the F word. No expert is going to use the F word, but the chief knows I'm right. It's the family. The breakdown of the family leads to the breakdown of the neighborhood, the community, and the city. So we get what we get where there is no authority in the family, when there are no boundaries set by the family, where there are no consequences enforced by the family in the lives of these young people, and no discipline instilled by the leadership of that family, basically fathers, we get what we get. Yeah. We get young people who encounter cops, young people who encounter courtrooms, young people who encounter correction officers, and ultimately cemeteries. It's in Baltimore, St. Louis, Chicago. I agree with the chief on this. We are fighting the same battle. He's from a law uh, enforcement perspective. I'm not law anymore. I'm working with young people every day and yep. I see it every day. Yep. And I'm telling you, it seems like we're losing the Pastor, battle. Pastor, you are spot on, uh, chief, spot on. We are yes. praying for the folks of Jacksonville, the three victims, as well as all the families that have been impacted by this. Thanks so much for joining the program. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.